This is Mark. Mark Catalina here from the Niall Boylan Show. So I'm going to pop you on hold and Niall's going to be with you in a moment. We're just about to go live. Is that okay? Sounds good. So you're going to be speaking to Niall Boylan. He's the presenter. Okay. And is there a title for yourself, Mark? I know you're, you're a member of Flat Earth Society, but is there a particular no, title? No, no, not even a member of the, not, not, not Flat Earth Society, just a, just a Flat Earth Advocate. Sorry, say that again? Flat Earth Advocate. Advocate. Okay, no problem. Okay. Hang on there, and I'll be with you just a moment. Okay. Talk Radio on Classic Hits. It is Nile Boylan with you right to one o'clock in the morning. And lastly at two, including continuing where we left off today in relation to uh, the Department of Social Welfare's latest plan to get us all to tell on each other. Well, that's kind of part of it, is it? The new uh, department's new compliance and anti-fraud strategy unit are hoping to save $530 million and recover $95 million in overpayments through special units and special investigation units and also publicising its hotline to encourage members of the public to report cases of suspected fraud. Uh, so I want to know, and it'll be asked, do you think there's anything wrong with doing a few nixers on social wel- while you're on social welfare? A lot of people seem to think it's okay. It's not the worst thing that can happen in the world. But other people believe that we have a moral obligation and a civic duty to report people. Because after all, it's taxpayers' money. It's tiffed. Tiffed, I say. We'll get around talking about that later on. Uh, also, by the way, I have an interesting uh, dilemma here, actually, that was on Mum's Net, or one of those kind of pages. Can you help me, please? It's caused a big argument with my boyfriend. He's been looking through my phone. Uh, I mean, is, is there ever a reason to look through your partner's mobile phone? Now, clearly, he found some messages which upset him, and I'll tell you about that a bit later on. But is there ever a reason to look through your partner's phone? Would you ever look through your partner's phone? I think it comes down to trust. There's nothing to hide you, what's the problem? talk about that as well a bit later on. We've lots to get through tonight, including, by the way, followers of the first Flat Earth movement attended a conference. Yes, there is a conference in relation to Flat Earth people. And the conference, I believe, is getting bigger. You know, it started off with a few people and now there's a few hundred. But anyway, uh, they kind of had a, a meeting in Shropshire at the weekend to discuss their theory that the Earth is like a dinner plate. And uh, the odd idea is gaining momentum following the hit Netflix program Behind the Curve. Uh, the YouGov poll this year said 3% of the UK's adult population believed the Earth was flat. Roughly 1.6 million people allegedly believe, in the UK alone, believe the Earth is flat. And the blogger Mark Sargent, uh, who has become a celebrity since starring in the Netflix show, was one of the speakers of the conference where tickets cost €55 Euro for one day, €700 Euro for the full resident, residential treatment. And Mark 51, who has just finished a European tour, uh, taking in Stockholm, Dublin, Belfast and Cardiff, thinks we live on a flat disc covered by a dome. A bit like, I suppose, a snow globe. And he's on the line to speak to me about his theory. And Mark Sargent, uh, who's the advocate for the Flat Earth Society. Good afternoon. Good evening to you, Mark. How are you? I am well. And by the way, um, I'm not actually an advocate for the Flat Earth Society. We're just Flat Earth advocates. The, the society would be uh, Flat Earth 1.0. We're Flat Earth 2.0. We're the new guys. Okay, <laughs> you're the updated version. Yeah, we're the updated version. <laughs> okay, I mean, where did this all start? Because many, many moons ago, you know, yeah. of course, scientists told us, you know, the Earth is not actually flat, lads. It's round. It's right. a ball. And right. then all of a sudden, in the last 10 years or so, yeah. I see people starting to say the Earth is flat again, which doesn't seem to make sense yeah. to the average person. So. Right. Where did this all come about again? Uh, it, it actually started about five years ago, believe it or not. Uh, I happened to write a series of videos and it ended up turning into a book called Flat Earth Clues back in 2015. And I said, you know what? I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. And here's why. And I laid out a series of videos, you know, my, my reasoning for it. And I said, hey, Internet Hive Mind, shoot me down, prove me wrong. And I honestly thought somebody would because that's, you know, I put up my, my real phone number, my real name, my address, and everything else. And I said, yeah, academics come at me. And the exact opposite happened. Media and people and that subject matter experts from all walks of life came forward and said, you know what? It's not that crazy. And then it just kept steamrolling until finally uh, the, the documentary Behind the Curve came out. And now our membership is all over the place. I've done conferences. Uh, you know, I just did the one in Kidderminster. And then, but before that, I had Los Angeles, Calgary, Auckland, 
Uh, I did a thing in Stockholm while I was over there, and then I still have mm, South Carolina and Dallas left to go, and that's just this year. It's I'm, cool. I'm shocked that 1.6 million people in Britain actually believe the Earth is flat. Oh, it's, that just shocks me. I, that, that, you know, that, that's like that's like telling me that you know the majority of the population of the UK believe that the Earth is only 6,000 years old because the Bible says so. Uh, right. Um, it's one of those kind of things, isn't it? Uh, it, it's it's interesting because the u.gov uh, survey they they went and did the americans before that back in 2017 and the number that really shocked everybody including national geographic that was really stunned and they did a full piece on it was that the 18 to 24 year olds you know basically the millennials in the united states a full 34 percent of them 34 percent didn't believe in the globe anymore now they couldn't tell you exactly ah, what, oh, i'm not making that up i'm mean, just watching youtube too much oh well this is, uh, i mean youtube is the biggest <laughs> television they believe a lot of things now in fairness mark there's a lot of those millennials believe that we have lizard people walking around uh, our society that so you're, I, I wouldn't take too much credibility uh, in that. Uh, well okay it, well let's let's get to the yeah, theory okay? okay okay now okay i mean there's all the obvious questions i'm going to throw at you which i'm sure you know, people have mocked you, sneered at you, oh, yeah. and asked you all the obvious questions. So let me just fire one or two of them at you, because sure. people will expect me to do that. Uh, I, if I, the Earth is flat, why don't we sail off the edge of it? Got it, because they're no different. Okay, the, 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 the sailing off the edge thing, that'd be the whole... We're not talking about an, a flat disk floating in space. In fact, there may not even be space. You mentioned earlier, it's kind of a snow globe. So can you sail off the edge of a lake? No, you can't because there's an edge all the way around, and that's what we're talking about here. A giant. Yeah, but you'd, you'd hit land pretty quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, absolutely. You would hit land, but you wouldn't fall off the edge. And so the land, the only constant that does not look anywhere close to the globe model and our model is Antarctica, which stretches all the way around like the edge of a dinner plate, like you were saying. So no matter what direction you go, eventually you're going to run into an Ant Antarctica. So that's why ships don't go over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I know, I know the flat earthers talk about Antarctica, but yeah. Antarctica is real, and you know, it is real. To say that no one has ever crossed the whole continent before, except mm. they have, and they still do all the time. Uh, I would and to believe otherwise is just a bit mad, really. Is that people do cross the continent of, of Antarctica? I, I wouldn't say all the time. And as far as crossing it, you got to remember that the GPS system, which was designed by the Americans back in the '90s, not only will it tell you where your nearest Starbucks is, but it'll also tell you where it wants you to go if you're going into a place that doesn't want you to go. Yeah, but these 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 wonderful, brave explorers like right. Scott and the rest of them, yeah. you know, they didn't have GPS. They used the sun, for example, you know, to tell them which way they were going. So they traveled in a straight line across Antarctica. Sure, what, what they thought was a straight line. you got to remember, the compass doesn't work well down there either. The, the North Pole has a wonderful compass, you know, where we call the center of the map. But the compass doesn't do anything down in antarctica and anyone can look this up this isn't our theory we just asked it's like why why does the south magnetic south pole just not do anything okay so how thick is this flat earth because if it's not that thick well then we're gonna where does gravity come from? no no that's that's an excellent question and that is what i tell people is like okay so if you ask mainstream science they say the globe is four thousand miles down to the center which is interesting because the deepest hole ever drilled is only eight miles. That was done by the Soviets and the Germans. So how thick I is... The, I think the Indians, do they not mine deeper than that in India? No, no, the, literally the deepest hole ever drilled is only eight miles, which is amazing. That's a fraction of 1%. That doesn't even come close to the 4,000. So what are the cross sections we see, you know, with red and yellow and orange and all those bands? What are those? Uh, what are those? Oh, anyway, so how deep is how thick is the flat Earth? We don't know. Okay, so are you suggesting when when we see that cross section of the Earth, that very famous picture of the cross section with yeah. the quarter of the Earth, yeah, yeah, out, yeah. and we see the cross section of uh, you know the medulla, whatever it is, and yeah. all those different layers. Are we? Are you suggesting that that's just made up? Oh, it's absolutely made up. It's a, it's a it's a giant. Why it should be a giant. Make that up? Because the science doesn't like putting question marks in text in textbooks. In fact, back in the old days, and we're not even talking 50, 60 years ago, there used to be small print at the bottom of that saying, "Oh yeah, by the way, we have no idea what's down there. We're just guessing based off of volcanoes." You know, volcanoes are very very. But it's, shallow. Not, but it's not. It's not just guessing based off. I mean, okay, volcanoes are part of it. Obviously, yeah. because we see magma coming from the center of the earth, and volcanoes. Well, that's what they say. Yeah. It comes from the center of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. volcanoes but it's not just get work no get no work. it, it is guesswork. Scient it's scientific theory no no, no 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 i mean you could even look up the the wiki entry posted by geological societies and they've said look we have no idea what's down there we just can't dig deep enough we we're we're going to take a guess and remember when it comes to science their guess is considered fact after a while it's just they put their stamp on it it's like after a while it becomes gospel it becomes canon
I mean, but people have seen the curvature of the earth. We've seen pictures of NASA, uh, well, uh, well, you know, uh, <laughs> citizens themselves who might have traveled on Concorde, for example, which mm. would have traveled a lot higher than your average long haul flight. They say they've seen it. wouldn't really see the curvature of the earth on a long haul flight. They have seen the curvature. Uh, uh, and it wasn't just the windows were roundy. Uh, they saw the curvature of the earth. And, every, and everyone out there that thinks they see the curvature, and I've heard this from people that say they were in balloons, they're mountains. There's still people that, to this day, a lot of them say they've seen the curvature from the beach. I say, take an, take an image, hold it. Up, no, no, you, no, 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 I'm no. I'm not going to talk about the beach because you couldn't see the curvature. Of the well, yeah, but it, well, so, okay, so why do I yeah. have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people emailing me saying I can see the curvature from the beach? That, no, okay, well, that's, that's time just pretending that they can see it. No, okay? not, not, pretend, not, not even, pretending, uh, not pretending. Pretend. I'm not going to be as crazy as that. No, 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 I got you, I got you. says they can see the curvature of the air from the beach, it's make, it, his well, eyes are playing tricks on it, it, right? Well, it's well, not. It's you not, have to go up a decent height to see the curvature of the air. And yet, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the world's most famous scientist, I'm not knocking on Brian Cox, he's the second most famous. The most famous scientist in the world says at even 130,000 feet, you cannot see the curvature. He absolutely said, just cannot be done. Well, they, well allegedly, people saw it when they flew on Concord. I will again, take, somebody take a picture of this. Send it to me. I will quit well, flat earth tomorrow. I'm taking pictures from satellite, or satellite images. Z we every amazing pictures. From space stations. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll get, I, I got. Drones. I got one for you. Well, you. You have to throw out all the space agencies almost immediately, because remember, the space agencies didn't. Not, I'm making it up. No, well, they didn't invent the globe either. Which is, I'll, I'll use a quick quote from one of your guys, uh, George Orwell, you know, a big author. Uh, and he said in 1946, he wrote an article, and he wasn't a flat earther, but he wrote this article. He says, you know, when you ask anybody on the, on, the, on the street how they know the world is a globe, they say, well, we just know. And then when you press them on it, they get angry. How did everybody in the world know in 1946 that it was a globe? Massa wasn't even found until 1958. They didn't know. They were told. There's a big difference. And that goes into the whole Orwellian thing, which is kind of like people that keep saying, and I know you say it's the trick of the eye, but it's like people that say they see the curvature from the beach. It's not that they see the curvature. They want to see the curvature. They keep thinking. No, you're right. you're all, your eyes are only capable of seeing a certain distance. And that's why people will often say, for example, oh, when I watch a boat, I can see it disappear into the horizon. So disappear over the horizon, right? right? I can physically only see it this. But, and, and ten years... Uh, and ten but in saying that, but hang on, fat editors will claim that the boat doesn't actually go past the horizon. It absolutely doesn't. That we just can't see it. Long... Um, they will say, you know, the Earth is flat. You just can't see it anymore. But realistically, but, you know, it takes 20-something hours to get around to the other side of the planet. If I jumped on a plane tomorrow right. and went up 25,000, 30,000 feet on yep. a 747... Yep. And it'll take me 20 hours at 900 kilometers an hour probably to get around the planet, and I can fly in a straight line. So yep. how does that happen? Uh, if you take your fin finger and move it around a dinner plate, a circular motion, technically, and you come back to the same point where you started, technically you've circumnavigated that dinner plate, but it doesn't mean the dinner plate is a no, globe. No, you have to do a U-turn. Well, I mean, go no, for you, Okay, fine. I very, no, no, I, okay, no, no, okay, let me give you an example. Okay. I start in London, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and I fly, and I head across Europe, and I right. go across to, uh, to Russia, uh, Alaska, whatever it is, back yep. towards Greenland, back towards Ireland, and back towards London again. Right, right, right. So I'm flown practically around right, the world. Right. Tech if I need to get back to London, the only way to get back to London without going around the world right. is to do literally a U-turn somewhere over Germany. Well, not a U-turn, uh, but, but a giant a giant uh, left-hand turn or a giant right-hand turn, which in our model works fine because, remember, the compass is going to react that way. And the GPS system is going to turn you in that direction. Now, it's going to be slow, so slow it's not going to be even detectable by anyone that's flying. So, yes, you can go on a plane or a boat and you can circumnavigate the world. It does not mean that it's a sphere. The system works against you. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying you, don't, that you, don't, you don't have to buy it. You don't have to buy it. I'm, I'm kind of listening to you. That's okay. okay the other one. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, a, a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse, right. say. Solar eclipse. All right. Yeah. When, when there's a partial solar eclipse, right. we can clearly see the shadow of the Earth right. on the moon. Right. It's not a flat line, it's a curve. Right. Can't be fake. Right. Can't can't be simulated in any way, shape, or form. What we're saying here is that well, the entire are you saying somebody has a projector in NASA. No, 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 no. No, I'm saying it's I'm saying it's way bigger than this. We're talking about a building. You're living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling that is so huge that we did not build this. Whoever built this, and if you want to say it's God Who or if you want or if you want to say it's something else, you know, an advanced civilization, that's fine. But that's what we're talking about here. A massive planetarium, a massive terrarium. And so, again, you go into a planetarium. Can you see waxing and waning, waning crescent moons on the ceiling? Of course you can. I'm just saying that when you walk out of that building, you're walking into a much, much bigger building. 
And in this kind of dome that you talk of, yeah. is, it, is it just Earth is in this dome, or are there other planets in this dome? No, no, it's just us. Uh, everything on the... Is uh, just, so what about the... So is the moon round? <sighs> you mean spherical? I mean, it's at least two-dimensional. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's spherical because I mean it might be, but at the very least, it's its own light source. It could be spherical. It could be two-dimensional. We're not sure, but it gives off its own light. It's self-illuminating. It has nothing to do with the reflection the of the sun. The moon is self-illuminating. Yep, yeah, absolutely, and you can test this. Oh, so, what about the theory that the sun is providing all the light? The, the dark side of the moon. For the moon? No, 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 That's no. My no. favorite song by Pink Floyd. No, the, by the no, no, I, I got gotcha. you, uh, because it's that sort of station. The uh, no, no, I mean the uh, the sun is like an incandescent light bulb, and the moon is like a like a cool LED. And you can test this with a twenty dollar point and click thermometer. The moonlight is actually colder than the moon shade, which is the exact opposite of the sun. So if it's uh, you know ninety degrees in the sun, it's eighty degrees in the shade, but it's fifty degrees. And I'm I'm using Fahrenheit for you. Fahrenheit, you know, fifty degrees in the moonlight. It's up to 60, 63 degrees in the moon shade. That's impossible. It should not ever go negative. And we can test this. You literally can point and click. I've done it myself. And and if you magnify moonlight, it even gets colder. Now, does that prove that the world is flat? No, but it absolutely blows away the relationship between the sun and the moon. I mean, I'm looking at some of the ridiculous arguments that people <laughs> who are flat earthers yes. uh, claim. For example, they say the earth is flat because bridges don't look curvy from the sky. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't use that one, but go ahead. The earth. They can't even leave the atmosphere. Uh, so you don't believe that satellites orbit the earth? I believe there's satellites up there, but I believe they're part of the high-altitude balloon program from NASA, which has been going on since the 50s. Most of the satellites so what, that... You, 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 so the satellites that we think are, well, when I say propelled, right. by very small engines, right. um, and the reason they're small engines is they're because they're solar panels and right. they're solar controlled, is because they, there's no gravity up there, so they don't, there's, there's no friction right. and they right. can right. obviously travel much faster. Except right. You don't believe that's true. No, you no, not at all. I... just floating. Yeah, yeah, they're just floating. In fact, you can look this up. This, this is not secret information. NASA has been um, firing up payloads upwards of four tons. They launched most of it from the southern hemisphere type area. I mean, they're amazingly huge. Well, I, I know they launch weather balloons all the time. Yes, absolutely. These big silver weather balloons. No, no, they're, they're not just they're not just weather balloons. I mean, they load full blown satellites. They are massive. Well, I'm saying there's satellites up there, but they are not put up on rockets most of the time. Why would you? Pennies on the dollar, you can get them up there. You don't need rockets. Uh, however, are there, do rockets exist? Yes, of course. I'm also, by the way, because you're probably going to ask that question, did the Americans go to the moon? No, they did not. In fact, why anyone outside of our country? <laughs> I wasn't going to ask that question, but you've thrown it in there, so hey, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, why, you do, it in there anyway. why does everybody believe well, I mean, the okay, Americans? What about all these, I mean, all these astronauts in America from yeah. NASA or from X Space or whatever it is, or yeah. you know, these private companies now, you know, are you suggesting that they're all in cahoots? And they're they're all lying to us. When you know we saw these wonderful pictures from what's that guy's name? Felix. What's his oh, name? Felix Baumgartner. He only jumped from one hundred and thirty thousand feet, but they yeah, used. Yeah, yeah. You can see, you can see the curvature there. No, no, no. Oh, please, come on. Yeah, 100, 100, 100, we have. I I could show you weather balloon footage right now at one hundred forty one hundred twenty thousand feet. It's absolutely flat. They used a peephole lens, a fisheye lens, and that. By the way, that's why Neil deGrasse Tyson. I knew you were going to say that. No, I mean I that's why that's why that. Neil Tyson. In fact, Neil Tyson even criticized that launch because he said, "Oh my God." He goes, what the hell? Why was that curvature so severe at 130,000 feet? If it was that severe at 130,000, the entire world would be the size of Arizona. Every, but the general public doesn't know that. So it's like, okay, let's use the footage. I've talked to media guys. They said, oh, yeah, we use that image because it's more dramatic. No one wants to see a flat horizon. They always wanted to see the curvature because it makes it look like he's actually in space. He wasn't in space. He was only 20 miles up. Well, you're suggesting that there's some sort of major conspiracy. It's a massive amongst conspiracy. All of, amongst all of NASA. No, 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 no. Very, very few. You don't, you know, all, most of the NASA guys, and hell, I lived next to a NASA guy when I was out in Colorado. They don't know anything. They just turn wrenches. They build fuel systems. They polish capsules. The only guys that need. Uh, that's, being, that's, a, that's a bit patronizing. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not being mean. I'm just saying, look, I mean, they, they have jobs. They, they do their stuff and rock, you know, because you have to build rockets and the rockets go up. Is anyone in those rockets? No. Uh, the only guys that need to know what, anything... What about Chris Hadfield? What about, I mean, he sent some amazing photographs. He was on Facebook Live. Yeah. He was doing singing songs about Ireland, actually, and he was yeah. at a few talk shows over here. Yeah. He came down. He was in the International Space Station. He's a colonel, in, he's a colonel in, in the Air Force. And he took some amazing photographs with his own camera. I, I, you're right. He absolutely wouldn't lie. He's in the military. Everyone that goes up there is a the military. In fact, most of them are high-ranking officers. So is he in on it? Of course is he he's in on it. it. 
Of course. Now, does he know the Earth is flat? Probably not. Or maybe he's not. certainly doesn't get debriefed on everything. This is one of those things where you don't, you know, need to know. And that is he knows he's faking something. But does he know the whole story? Probably not. But no, Hatfield, uh, Scott Kelly, Terry Virts, all those guys. Even even your guy out there, Tim Peake. For, you know, and by the way, you know what? It, I'm a little surprised, but that uh, Britain never got into the space program, considering everybody else oh got into God. it. By the way, there's another conspiracy theory. Don't ever refer to Ireland as Britain. You'll uh, be in big trouble. Uh, well, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. UK. I know. I was up there. You know, I, I did street activism for Flight up, up in uh, Belfast and Dublin just uh, just last week. Oh, um, okay, okay. <laughs> it was fun. Hey, mind you, it could be very soon again. We don't know. All right. But, <laughs> but in saying that, getting back to the, the flat Earth yeah. people. All right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I find it hard to believe some of these credible people who have sent back some, some of the most beautiful photographs right. from space shuttles or space stations sure. uh, using their own cameras. These are not fish eye it's, cameras. It's the, well, no, cameras. those aren't. And, but we see, it, the, and we see the beauty of the uh, Earth. The, the beauty of CGI, the beauty of Photoshop. Come on, you've seen the movie. Well, maybe you uh, haven't. You, you, yeah, ever, you, ever, you, ever see, you ever seen the movie Gravity with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney? It's gorgeous. So, yeah, or, or hell, we'll even movie. go back yeah. to uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick. Gorgeous, even in Blu-ray, even today. Things can be faked. We're only talking about time and money here yes only if people want to fake them well why wouldn't you fake them in, the, in this case by the way you're why, eventually why you you're eventually you're gonna get this why would you want to fake it i mean we've got some beautiful pictures of the earth there's no reason there's no need to fake it. Well, of why? course there is okay here's here's the thing right yeah. okay a conspiracy theory always has a motive right okay the, if you want to talk about men landing on the moon i know the conspiracy theory is out there some people believe it some people don't but right. the motive was quite clear that the americans wanted to win the space race against the russians okay so there was the motive okay right the jfk conspiracy once again, there was a motive right. to get Kennedy off the planet, all right? right. Uh, you know, uh, Lady Diana, there's a conspiracy theory. There's a motive. 9-11, right. there's a motive. Yeah, yeah. Don Donald, Donald Trump was elected by the Russians and so on and so on. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, course. all that. Okay, so they all have motive. Right. But there is no motive in making people believe the Earth is not flat. Oh, sure there That's is. The sure there is. You just haven't thought about it. And that is, the, yeah, you're a smart guy. Think about this. Uh, the potential destabilization of everything. And by that, I mean, educationally, all the universities, I don't care what department it is, astronomy, archaeology, uh, biology, they would all have to be retooled from the ground up. Economically, world markets have to be suspended for months. And of course, religiously, that's the big one, which is all of a sudden you're giving the, the five major houses of the world, um, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, you're all giving them simultaneously leverage against science, who's been building up basically their own religion for the last 500 years. And you're saying, oh yeah, by the way, you might be wrong about something and they're never going to let it go. Again, remember, science has been beating people over the head with textbooks for the last 500 years, especially the church. And the, I mean, there's a potential for some upheaval there and they're not going to take that sort of chance. And I'm not saying that we're going to hide it forever, but if they only didn't discover it till roughly 1960, give or take, then, you know, how long do you keep it a secret? And I think it's slowly getting out now. I, I don't believe that's a good enough motive. But yeah, I'm sorry. looking at some of the text coming in. I mean, what he says here, ask him about a documentary called Operation High Jump. I don't know it. What is the documentary, Operation High Jump? Uh, it was a mission, you know actually. Uh, it wasn't a documentary. Um, Operation High Jump was the mission by the United States Navy back in 1946 because there was nobody down in, there was only one nation down in Antarctica during World War II and that was uh, Nazi Germany supposedly because they were looking for more magical things to fight the war you know Indiana Jones wasn't exactly just a movie uh, and they went down there to root out uh, the Nazi bases in 1946 that it doesn't have that much to do with Flat Earth but it's an interesting story mm -hmm. and whether or not they okay, saw J James and okay James and Dublin, let me just get to a few of these yeah, yeah, yeah. people happy about the way you can if you want to say another question uh, to Mark Sargent, who uh, believes the Earth is flat yeah. and is part of the Flat Earth Society. No, no, not the Flat Earth, 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 Earth Society. Belief. We're not actually... Sorry, yeah, I know. That's sorry. all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. I have to yeah. say that, though. Uh, you can you can WhatsApp or text 87 188 Now, could you ask him what he thinks of the picture known as the pale blue dot? It's a wonderful picture, actually. Uh, that comes in from James in Dublin. Uh, the pale blue dot is, is no different from the famous blue marble shot, which was taken in 1972. Um, which is, look, it was just fabricated by the United States. Um, real quick, which was the, uh, the the famous blue marble shot, which was taken in 1972. There was only one picture of the taken in full sunlight taken of the Earth between 1972 and 2015 when we started ramping up. 43 years, nobody took a, a shot of the Earth. 
How, how is that even possible? It's because they milked the well, same... Nobody took, well, nobody took a shot from that distance, is the point. Oh, you know. come on. No, there, has been par- there has been partial shots of the earth. Yeah, but not full disc shots. Of... For, 43 years? For, that's a long time, man. It's all the 70s, all the 80s, all the 90s, uh, all the way to 2000, 2010. Come on. It it's never happens. And now okay, they're taking... Okay. Well, okay. Let me read another question. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. How go ahead, go ahead. explain tectonic plate movement? Oh, it works just fine uh, on a flat disc, you know, and enclo- a snow globe has tectonic plates as well, and so does the underwater conveyor system, the jet stream, magma systems. It works. But surely you have to be spherical to have tectonic plates. No, no, no. You can you can do it on you can do it on. I'm working out my head here. No, no. You can do it. You can do it on a flat model. It's fine. Doesn't does in fact most of the things in a flat model actually work better than on a sphere. So no tectonic plates, I have no problem with it. But that, but it's a good question. Okay, Thank so you. Says, how, okay, somebody wants to know how is he calling from the United States uh, to here with no satellites? Question. Oh me. no, no, I got I you. Okay, he, for, can, he didn't say there wasn't no, satellites. He just said there was. Yeah, satellites. no, no, that's a good question though because well, all, by the way, most of the bandwidth and this is again not a secret is done by fiber optic cables. We have a massive system of fiber optic cables that we've been laying. Oh, I don't know, since about 1900 in the under, underwater Absolutely ocean. Under the sea. I'm yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Most made, yeah. most of the bandwidth is there. Yeah. Uh, any satellites that are up there are sending minimal minimal bandwidth. Yeah, but I but like for example. Yeah. If if it was flat, yeah. okay, and I live in Ireland yeah. and I'm on the three network, okay, yeah. when I fly to the United States, I automatically connect to AT and T, because I can no longer pick up the three network sure. because the satellite which footprints Ireland and the United Kingdom and probably parts of France and Spain right. uh, won't reach over that far because. Oh. Of the curvature of the earth. No, no, I got you. I got you. When you get close to land, yeah, you are going to run into the towers, but that's all still all ground based. You don't. I. You don't. No, you're missing the point I'm making, Mark. Mm. You're missing the point I'm making. What? The reason that the, a satellite can't throw a larger footprint, right? Like for example, Sky Sky Television, right. which is big in Europe and is not big in America. Right. Okay? The big uh, radio TV uh, network by, by satellite in America would be uh, serious. Right. We can't get serious here. And the reason we can't is because of the curvature of the Earth. The footprint doesn't stretch across. I, I got gotcha. you. That, that sort of argument, I'll throw the GPS question, which is why does the member GPS system, which has 32 supposedly blanket covering satellites, why does it stop working about 150 miles off of any coast? Why is that? Because happen? the GPS system, well, well Mark, if you, now if you knew the technology. Oh, GPS, okay, GPS. please, please do lecture okay, me. Well, okay, well, hang on. GPS sends a signal to a mast. Right. And the mast is what you receive your signal in your, on your apparatus from. Right. And unfortunately, the mast that will only stretch about 10 to 16 kilometers. So that's why we have to have mass. So when you go 10 to 16 kilometers from the coastline of a country, you're going to lose signal. That has nothing to do with the satellite. Got it. So planes, when they go 150 miles off of any coast, they're basically on their own. They're, they're... No, planes, planes are receiving signals from satellite because they have different equipment. Which... We don't have satellite phones, although there are satellite mobile phones that are available, which are used by explorers of Everest and places. Got it, got it. So when I, when I see a plane blink off of the GPS system, what I'm looking up on the line, and they all do, when they all, their, their latitude and longitude go to approximate or estimated, and they literally blink off the screen, they're absolutely fine. We just, we're just not allowed to see them. Not the way it works. No, then, then tell me, tell me how it works, man. I watched it for a long, long time, and it's one of the clues. It's one of the reasons why the documentary was built. But do go on, please. Okay, please. John. In, okay, well, hang on. John and Ennis asked a question. I think it's similar to the question I asked you earlier on. But um, is the Earth the only flat planet, in his opinion? Otherwise, it's the it's the only planet. Peri- it's the only planet. Period. Everything else in the sky is just a light show. Nothing different than you would see in a planetarium. That means Jupiter. That means Mars. The sun and the moon are self illuminated, but all the other lights in the sky are just lights in the sky. It's just lights. So, so the whole. So basically, we could just show everything out of the cot at this stage. Everything that we we heard about the Big Bang theory. About oh, you stars, believe in the Big Bang theory. You believe in the stars. Big Bang theory that everything just came out of nothing, and and of course, you know, the big question that is, what was before the Big Bang? Well, I I don't know, and scientists don't know either. So but, why but come up with the Big Bang? Well, hang on, thousands of years ago, or hundreds of years ago. We didn't know about, you know, where Earth came from. We didn't know where the sun came from. We wouldn't have the same understanding. Right. Now we do. Maybe in a thousand years' time, we'll know what was there before the Big Bang. Right. Maybe then. Right. It takes time to learn. It, it, it does, but science makes claims that they absolutely cannot back up. I mean, they've been talking about dark matter now. Dark matter is a complete theory. Carbon dating, evolution. Yeah, but, I mean, but people walked out of caves, Mark. You know, you Did know, they? Back, you know, a million years ago or so, they walked Did out they? of caves, pointed at the sun, right. and went, ooh. 
Right. Tell, tell me. Tell me about. Tell me about. Tell me about the coelacanth fish. Tell me about that fish extinct. Seventy million. Seventy million years extinct, and then they caught one off off South Africa, and then Mozambique, and then Madagascar, and then National Geographic starts swimming with them. Tell me how they screwed up that badly, and then tell me how there are. How tell me how the carbon. <laughs> okay, so they can make mistakes. But and I got into this argument with somebody in Belfast. They said and this lovely lady who said that yes, they make mistakes. And I go, but they're not making a mistake about the Earth. She goes, no, that's an absolute fact. But that's that'd be a rather big mistake now. A fish, compared to what a seventy million se compared to the, the existence of a planet. Compared that to would a, be a rather big mistake, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. It'd be a, it, it would be a huge mistake. You're absolutely right. Mm. Okay, what about the climate? The climate obviously depends, according to scientists, right. on you know the world spinning on its axis at a certain a certain degree. The, and over time, uh, they believe that axis will change. They also believe over time the poles will change, right. and the polarity, which affects the climate as well, and has affected the climate over millions of years. Right. Uh, is that all out the window as well? Yep. All of it. As a matter of fact, doesn't it make more sense when we're talking about greenhouse gases if it's an actual greenhouse with a pressurized system, which of course no. goes into a whole other thing? Tell me, tell me how the atmosphere isn't ripped off. By the vacuum of space. Tell me how that doesn't happen. So, so, so nothing has never has. I mean, I know we have heard of the Van Allen belts, which is the radiation belts right. you before you leave the, uh, the atmosphere. Yeah. But uh, you're telling me nothing has ever left this planet. Nothing is nothing this, has ever uh, left this the planet. Atmosphere. It is it has been the most wonderful secret that has been hid from us since 1960. Would you tell the population <laughs> if you figured out that the world that you've been telling people for 500 years was a globe wasn't a globe? Would you actually tell the population? No. I, I think I would. No, I you would not. I I could prove it. Not, not if there's potential of people walking through the streets with uh, pitchforks and torches. You wouldn't tell them. I mean, even if there's a small chance well, of that, I mean, you wouldn't why, tell them. I mean, no. But I mean, why would why would you make stuff up? I mean, I can understand people making stuff up. With, as I said to you already, there's a motive behind right, it. Right. But I don't see the motive behind it. Right. And, and, and I, I, by the way, I could read out quite, quite abusive text, but I'm sure you're used to that. Oh, I'm used to that, <laughs> of course. No, no. That In fact, that you know, that is the normal response. And I expect, look, if you believe in Flat Earth right away, I would think there was probably something wrong with you. But that's okay. Remember, I'm not here to convince especially you, the host. I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just no, asking. I'm only here to quiz you, by the way. Uh, I'm, somebody else, I'm reading some of the messages coming in. Somebody says that mm, beep, 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 beep does not even understand the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory does not say there was nothing and it just popped into existence. Right. It actually says that all matter, all matter was compact right. into a tiny speck and then started moving. Again, apart. what was before the Big Bang Theory? It is the oldest argument of the church versus the state, which <laughs> is what happened. You know, you can't, if you want to, again, the Big Bang Theory. It's fine that people believe in the Big Bang Theory, but don't put so much faith into science that you believe absolutely everything they say, which is one I of our points. Absolutely everything. Well, don't again, if everything. you go down that road. And that's why we're human beings. We question things. But, and, we, and we do too. In fact, I say, look, do your own research and ask your own questions, which is don't believe. Look, it, you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level? Great. Fine. I can test that right now. You want to tell me what the core of the Earth looks like? When you show me that that cross section, uh, not so fast, you know. And and again, no, but of course, but there's a lot of things I can't personally test. You right. know what I mean? I can test gravity, I can test all those other things. But you're right; there are a lot of things we can't physically test right. ourselves, and, and we have to, you know, believe in scientists and their theories. And sometimes, by the way, they will update their theories. They will come along and say, "Well, listen, you know, 20 years ago we told you this, but actually we think this is probably more likely." And that's what science is all about. Yes, yes. Uh, somebody yes. says, that, "Did you see the documentary Science Program debunking flat Earth? It was quite detailed." There's there's a lot of videos out there called debunking flat. I, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Well, again, yeah, I mean, it's it's there's a, there's a lot of them out there, and we've been taking the hits since 2015. But what I thought you were screaming at the TV on that one, were you? What at debunking flat Earth? Yeah. No, nah, I mean, look, people, look, everyone's going to respond differently. Every here's the great thing about the flat Earth community: everybody going into it hates flat Earth, including me. I try to, my, one of my quotes is, look, I, tr every morning I try, I get up and I try to kill Flat Earth and every day I fail. I tried for s nine months to shut this thing down and everybody going into it saying Flat Earth is terrible, Flat Earth is terrible. And the longer you stare at it, the worse it gets. Because eventually, again, can I prove a Flat Earth to you right now? No. Can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that you have nowhere left to turn but some sort of Flat Earth model? Yeah, I can. I can do that all day long. You say, well, reasonable doubt well, isn't they, enough. They, and I go, it is in court every hour of every day. But Mark, by your own admission, you can't prove the Earth is flat. Not but entirely. Yet, there is more. But you, they, yeah, okay. But there is a lot more evidence. No, 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 no. That that is where you were. That Earth. that is where you were wrong. Earth. In terms of plot holes, there are okay. way more plot holes in the globe than there is in the flat Earth. 
Okay, by the way, can I just uh, some more questions, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, could you ask him where does the power come from for his light show in the sky, and what happens when the power when the power outage happens? Do the stars just disappear from the sky? Because I've never seen the stars disappearing in a power outage. Awesome. Actually, that's a good question because well, and I don't want I I, I don't think this this show does name a lot with chapter and verse, but I love the whole revelation you know with uh, stars falling from the sky like fig figs from a tree. It's like, how can stars fall from the sky if they're millions of light years away? Would it make more sense? They're just part of the ceiling, part of the television proje projection no, well, system? The, re the, reason, the reason we see stars moving is because the stars are not actually moving at all. Because as you know, the stars are the light we're seeing from uh, suns like ours, right. uh, you know, which have died possibly you know, millions of light years ago. Right. But the reason we're seeing them moving is because they're not moving, we're moving. Well, again, if you asked any ancient culture, even as little as 500 years ago, they'd say, are the stars moving or is the ground moving? Everybody said the stars was moving. Uh, and by the way, why is there no so, so Why is there no so the sun doesn't move, no. Well, the, the sun, sun no, no, the sun, the sun no, the, well, no, the sun, the moon, everything in the sky is moving. We're not moving. We could literally, like you said in the oh, beginning, okay. we could literally be sitting in a snow globe on a desk somewhere. By the way, uh, another quick question for whoever was asking there is like, why don't you ever see parallax in the sky? Meaning, you know, there's some stars that are 10 years lights away, 10, 10 light years away, and there's another one that's a thousand light years away. No different than, you know, when you're driving by, you know, the mailboxes go by quickly and the mountains in the distance go by very, very slowly. So why don't we ever mm -hmm. see that in the sky ever? And you say, well, why, we don't. Why don't we see what? In, why don't we see what in the sky? Why don't we ever see parallax? Why don't we ever see drift? Why don't the constellations ever change? Remember, we're moving in like four different directions because, in the galaxy. Because, okay, maybe I could give you an explanation mm. for that because mm. in, in in the understanding of time, yeah. we are playing a tiny, tiny little role. Those stars have been there probably and most likely a lot longer there are planets which is probably they reckon 13 billion years wow uh, those 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 stars have been there a lot longer than that right. and in the big scheme of things right. they probably are moving but we will never see it in the time span that we will survive on this planet mm -hmm. i i'm skeptical two thousand years of a zodiac and the zodiac's never changed even slightly yeah of course it doesn't change no just like we don't notice the climate changing well According to some people, they do. We don't notice the climate changing, even though the climate changes on, on a regular basis. We don't notice it as much because it's done over a long period of time. It's like, for example, when somebody says, "You got your sister's put on a huge amount of weight," and you go, "Geez, I didn't even notice that," because you're there all the time. You don't notice. It. Ah. We don't notice these things. It's done over a short amount of time. I got you. I got you. Oh, yeah, right. okay. What else Mark, you got? It's been an interesting conversation. Well, thank you. And, you know, thank I, you. Me and you are never going to agree. No, I'm probably not. And it's an interesting conversation <laughs> anyway. Yeah. You know, thank, no, thank I'm, you. Thank you for having I'm me. Good, I'm good luck with it. You know, good luck with it. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure there's money to be made in it somewhere. I don't know how, but I'm sure there is. Good luck with it, Mark. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much for coming on the air, and I appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. There you go, Mark Sargent.